Welcome to the Weird Christmas Podcast. I'm Craig Kringle. Merry Halloween, Christmas something, everybody. You know, every year I start this thing a bit earlier, but it's October 1st, 2020. Yeah, I hope this year is treating you as well as it can. I figured I'd start just a bit early this year because we all need some distractions. Plus, I just have more this year than I've ever had before. So before we get to this episode, I want to give you a little preview of everything I've got in store for you this year because I'm pretty excited about it all. Of course, first we have the third annual Weird Christmas Flash Fiction Contest. Third annual. That's amazing. And if you don't know what that is, every year I hold a contest for very short stories, 350 words max, all about something weird or strange or unusual about the winter holidays. All the details are at weirdchristmas.com. So if you want to find out more, head over there. You've still got a month to write something because the deadline is November 1st, and that is always my favorite show to produce every year. I've already got a bunch of good entries so far and more coming in every day, which is just amazingly wonderful. We'll also, of course, have a ghost story read by a bunch of you glorious listener volunteers. And i still got a few spots left, so if anyone's feeling particularly brave and like they have a beautiful voice they need to share with the world, hit me up at weirdxmas at gmail.com if you want to get in on the action. Otherwise, I have a ton of other shows planned this year. I'll be talking Christmas werewolves with my friend Benito Sereno, who I think is required by law to be on the show every year. I am finally going to do something about Krampus. So I was lucky enough to get in touch with the man who literally wrote the book on Krampus, Al Ridenour, and he's going to lay out the whole sordid history of our favorite festive demon. I'll also talk to Eric Kaplan, who's one of the writers for The Big Bang Theory, but who also wrote a really great book about philosophy and Santa Claus, which is wonderful and interesting in all kinds of ways. Now, I usually don't like to be a podcast that's all about you know, other podcasts, but there are two new Christmas shows this year I hope you'll take a listen to, and their hosts were kind enough to give me some of their time. By the way, there's just a ton of new podcasts in general this year, so I hope you're not overwhelmed, and you can still find me in all that mess. But these two in particular, one is Season's Eatings, which I think you can tell what that one's about, and another is Holly Jolly X Masu which is all about Japanese Christmas music. Yep, you heard that right. So we're getting some weird history and some weird media right off the bat. But both shows are fascinating and well done, and I hope you check them out. Then we're going to have more History of Santa Claus, the director of a new Christmas movie called Christmas Ride, more writers, little music, all kinds of stuff. So this will definitely be my biggest year of the show so far, and I'm really excited. But Enough about the future. Let's talk about the now, and the now is October. So let's get started with something Halloween-y. I won't go swimming in a lake at a camp where a boy is drowned, you see. And I won't go sleeping in a neighborhood on a street named after a tree. And I won't go asking for directions in a ramshackle house in the countryside. And I won't go picking up a puzzle box that a demon left behind. Because I don't want to be in a horror flick. I don't want to be in a horror flick. I don't want to be in a horror flick. I don't, I don't, I don't. Most of you listening to this know that I got into the whole holiday thing because of my terrible experiences with Christmas as a child. My adopted parents would lock me in a closet under the stairs every 23rd of December and tell me to be quiet while their real family came over to stay for the next three days. And I... wait, I think that's something else. No, it all started with postcards. I found a fascinating book called Christmas Curiosities, Odd, Dark, and Forgotten Christmas by John Grossman. He's a curator and collector of old Victorian ephemera, like cards and advertisements. And I was immediately at home in this weird world of holiday images, both familiar and strange. The rest is what you see on social media all year of me sharing my odd finds. But luckily, I'm not alone in this strange little world. Not too long ago, I stumbled onto a website claiming to have collected almost every single Halloween postcard printed up until and during World War I. After that, the vibe changes to more standard trick-or-treat fare, but these early cards are often a fever dream of like half-forgotten traditions and a hundred-year-old versions of what they thought was creepy or cute, you know, people who barely share our aesthetic. 
I knew whoever put it together was a kindred spirit, so I reached out to Eric Hinton, who runs the site called simply Halloween Postcards. But you can go there at Vintage Halloween Cards, all one word, dot blogspot dot com. There's a link in the show notes. He was kind enough to share his favorites with me and talk about how he's collected them and even go over some of his favorite odd examples. So there is a video version of this episode at weirdchristmas.com and YouTube. Some things will just make more sense if you can see the cards once we start talking about individual ones later on. So go check out the show notes at weirdchristmas.com or search on YouTube where I have a handful of other things that don't come out here. And by the way, this episode has actually been available for quite a while for those who support me on Patreon. And if you, too, want to get a sneak peek at what I'll release during the season, you can sign up, too. Or if you just want to help me out, either for a little while or a long while, you'll get access to bonus episodes, longer versions of the interviews, and I'll be posting episodes as I make them throughout the year. So if you can't wait until Thanksgiving or Halloween for a weird Christmas fix, Patreon is your friend. I started it out at $2 per month, so you can get all the extra content, and I'll even send you a sticker to put wherever you want. There's also a $5 per month level, where you'll get a bunch of actual postcards sent to you throughout the year. You'll get to help vote on the Flash Fiction Contest, and I'll have a bunch of other surprises. Because of all the help I got last year, I covered all of my costs for hosting and recording, and I was even able to increase the prizes for the Short Story Contest this year so that everybody gets paid, even if it's just a little bit. And that makes me feel so good. So thank you to those of you who went to Patreon, and I hope a few more people may come and join us over there for some fun. I should just add that you can donate more than the $2 or $5 a month. Patreon does allow you to do that, but I would be pressuring you if I really suggested that too hard. They also gave me a Discord server, which I've never used, but I figured that so many people may still be stuck at home or something that it might be a good distraction. I'm going to go set that up, and it might even be ready by the time this airs. But for now, let's talk Halloween postcards. I asked Eric how he got started, and we went from there. In 2017, I was, I don't know where it really started, but I, I saw some postcard images on the internet somewhere. I was just looking at various Halloween things. I don't know what it was. And so then I started searching. I thought, oh, those would be, you know, that'd be cool to own a couple of those. And so, you know, I started looking for the sources of them. And when I saw the prices of them, I was kind of, shocked i i had no idea you know i had not done any collecting of postcards other than you know when you go to visit someplace you know but so I, when i saw the prices of them it was like oh this is you know kind of out of my my price range so i started collecting the digital images uh at different places and i put them on a on a digital frame in at my house and i oh, i had a, oh, a hundred or so and then Halloween came and went, and I put them away and changed to something else. And then the, the last year, when I was getting out Halloween stuff, I thought, oh, yeah, I have these postcards. And so I pulled them out again and said, you know, I thought, you know, I'd really like to collect all the postcards, not knowing any idea how many Halloween postcards there were. And then as I started doing research, I, I realized that there were over 3,000 but I started collecting and looking at all different sources that I could anywhere on the internet and, you know, looking through Flickr, eBay, um, museum sites, all these little different things. And I was, you know, as I said before, I was looking for that comprehensive list of this is what, what it is. Cause as a child, I was like a, a stamp collector. And so it was like, you, had a, you have a little pictures there and you like collect all the stamps and put them in there. So I was kind of looking for something that would say, okay, you have the complete collection, but I could never find that until I did find this book, you know, at the end of my, not the end, but in last year when I was collecting, I'm looking at it on here now. I, I didn't actually find them until I was like all done. And, you know, it's like, oh, really? <laughs> now I find you. There's a couple call their names are Gary and Louise Carpentier or Charpentier. I'm not sure how to pronounce the last name there. Mm -hmm. But they did several editions of this like spiral bound little book that's called Halloween Postcards. And I'm looking at it right now and it says that they have over three thousand five hundred old postcards. And they've done a really great job of categorizing them. I wish this is what what I had been looking for 
when I started something that would like give me a like a framework to to know what I was doing. But um, if you look on my website, that I've copied a couple of their pages, but the book itself is really expensive. Mm-hmm. But it's it's a really good. Th- um, source there. And it's something I was really looking for as just a way to organize all of them. And, you know, on one of your, I listened to one of your podcasts when you were talking about Christmas ones, wanting to have some kind of a system to, you know, some kind of a searchable database or yeah. some kind of like thing. So you could say, okay, I need all the pictures of laughing pumpkins or something, you know, and, but it, it there's nothing out there that's, that's like that. But I, I'm, you know, these people have done a really good job, but it's in really low publication, I'm guessing, maybe to a small audience and, you know, those, and I was going to try to contact those people and see, you know, what can we do to, you know, get this online or something. But I think from my, a little bit of research that I've done, they both passed away. So Mm. the last edition here is that I can see the third edition was in 2009. So did you have a particular method to look for these? Me personally, I'm kind of like a historian and him of my family and everybody gives me their like family stories and stuff. And I'm, I don't know why I've been the designated collector. And I personally like to kind of like solve mysteries and, and different things. And so I started collecting these things and I started organizing by publishers and by artists and um, uh, what, and I like to have the background story behind people. And so I started looking for information about the different, um, publishing houses and the different, um, artists. And I found that there was very, very little information on, on the artists and, you know, just not very much at all. And so, um, I started and I wanted to document and give kind of credit to people that have done these beautiful cards and all this work. And so I started to, to collect any information that I could. And I kind of do a a lot of family history work. And so uh, there's different sites like ancestry.com and familysearch.org. I was able to reconstruct, you know, some things about these these different artists and their lives and where they were and kind of some of their families and i found that a lot of the the artists were contract workers they were hired by the different publishing companies and a lot of times they didn't even get credit for their name on the their work and so that's sad in a way because you know you'd, you'd really like to give those people credit um, a lot of the, the cards were, were made in Germany and England at the time of World War One, and, uh, and then a lot of those factories were actually destroyed in the war, and so a lot of the, the plates and the actual records of who did them and all that were destroyed in the war. And some of them, those, those, um, publishing, um, people moved to the United States after world war one and began starting again, but it just, it wasn't the same thing as that was before. And, you know, using different tools on the internet, I was able to like find, um, like where the publishing houses were and use like, Google searched and see now where the, if that building is still there and some of them are still there in places in Boston and New York and others are just fields and they, they're gone. But it's really interesting because I don't know if you know, but, but Google documents or, uh, um, mm-hmm. Google is mm-hmm. like scanning like the whole world, you know, for yeah. everything. And they are scanning some pretty obscure documents. And there are like tons and tons of these like publishers, like their monthly magazines that publishers would send to each other, you know, about things that they were publishing. And those are pretty cool to look in those to see, you know, information about, you know, what the, the world of publishing was like in the, you know, the, that early time of the postcards there. But That's actually me personally, my favorite thing that I found on your site, in addition to still some cards that I hadn't seen before. 
but most of the thing that I do is sort of making fun of things and pointing out anachronism and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. the stuff I don't post is that, yeah, I've really gotten fascinated by the companies behind the cards, the processes by which, especially, you know, Christmas cards are, are more what I've spent most of my time on. But mm -hmm. it, same issue that you ran into, just how hard it is to find out information about certain artists or about certain series or publishing houses that would come out with these really brilliant or original or just strange things and then not to be able to put any context to it is so frustrating. So I was thrilled when I saw your site and how much information you were able to get about things that I had even sometimes just had suspected they were a series before because they seemed pretty similar, but you had a lot of good information. So that's, wow. you know, that's personally, that was my favorite part. <laughs> that's my best. Yeah. yeah. I just, I just love the history part of it. I'm, you know, and so I, I've just always been very interested in old children's books illustrations. I'm a teacher, and so I'm kind of drawn towards um, old readers and things from the, you know, where kids learn how to read. And yeah. so, you know, the pictures and the illustrations in those are so much, I don't know, better than what we have today. And in a lot of ways, just a lot of, a lot of effort was put into those pictures, you know. Yeah. Well, you sent me a zip file of, I had asked you, you know, what are some of your favorites? And you very generously picked out over 70. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was hard. Once I got going, it's like, oh, yeah, I love this one. Too. I understand. I understand. Well, what are those, if you want to describe maybe a couple that you think are pretty unusual, at least that stand out from the rest. And a lot of these, you know, I have a few, I've got some questions about that I'd like to talk about that I've shared for years. Um, but I'm, I'm curious what you find most interesting or unique. Um, oh, so looking, I'm going to be looking in this weird Halloween section here that I sent you. Okay. I thought it was, it's just very interesting to kind of compare what we think about Halloween now and what Halloween started as there. And a lot of the cards and, and, I didn't really realize this till I started looking at this Halloween at, at when these cards were out was more of a young adult or uh, older adult kind of celebration. It really wasn't too much about kids and it was more about like inviting people to parties and things. And it was with definite romantic undertones to a lot of the stuff and a lot of the cards are uh, Halloween at the time, I think, was really tied to kind of mysticism and kind of occult type like charms and things, you know, like some of these like this. There's this there's several where they you're supposed to like the lady's supposed to look in a mirror and look at midnight and she'll see the, the image of her true love in the the a reflection in the mirror one that I think is really kind of weird. I don't know if you looked at the, my what I've numbered number six by Bamberger, and it's got um, a, la a lady in red, and she's, like, screaming. And if you, if you look over on the right-hand side, there's a, there's a little person cre creeping around the door mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and it looks like Alfred E. Newman from Mad <laughs> Magazine to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's from and, a series too, with that that ghost figure. Um, uh -huh, there's with, a whole bunch of those. Yeah, and I the one that really always stands out to me is there's one where it's the the ghost figure right next to a giant owl. Yeah, and that was one I've always just had a hard time figuring out because the ghost figure is more like someone in a costume with a hood. But and I'm by calling it a ghost, I'm totally assuming it's a ghost. I don't know. You know, it, it you could call it a cult member or something like that. Um, Who knows? But. I think it was a really a tied to a cult and stuff. You know, all the the witches and stuff. What's really interesting to me is that the witch. You know, for a witch nowadays, we think of a lady, an old hag in a black hat and black dress. But throughout all of them, there are multi colors of witches, gold and orange and green dresses and hats with stripes on them. And a lot of times the witches are actually very beautiful women, mm -hmm. you know, not, not, they do have the hags in there too, but it's just all the different colors that it's become to be witches. 
and something interesting I, I probably should do a little bit of research on this but i don't i never found any cards that were like of there are no vampires so i don't know when vampires started being you're popular. right. Yeah, you're right. I can't think of any either. Yeah. There are, there are no Frankensteins in any of the cards. So Frankenstein and, and Vampire must have come after that. Um, there are very few skeletons. I think I've only seen maybe one or two skeletons in the cards. Yeah. Um, lots of bats and cats and pumpkins and witches and lots of cards about people being scared Mm -hmm. you know that they have i think halloween was more i don't know about mischief in that time yeah and there was a whole thing about kids kids and young people rioting and or you know pulling pranks like there's i'm trying to find your number um uh number 45 from the griggs series where the kids are stealing the gate that stealing gates uh-huh. and taking signs off of businesses and switching them up and, and playing tr- pranks like that. There are a bunch of cards I know that have that and that that was a big problem <laughs> during yeah, Halloween. Yeah, the, yeah, there's a whole section of, of police cards in one section that yeah. uh, one publisher of all the little pranks that kids can do or yeah. something, you know. Yeah, and in fact, that's one thing that a lot of the histories talk about. One of the reasons why it became you know, candy focused and focused on kids was that was one way to kind of get kids focused on something else is to start these new little traditions instead of having them run amok. So I don't know yeah. if that's fully true, but that's definitely part of it. Um, the, the series, the got shock series, um, in your, you got right around starting around number 31, 32, but there's a series of pumpkin figures, um, that I've always thought were so strange because they had ears they aren't carved pumpkins. Oh yeah, they're I pumpkin, noticed the ears. Yeah, they're, they're pumpkin people. They have ears and they've got hair on them, so they're they're not carved pumpkins by any means. And those guys always just stood out to me as looking obviously Halloween, but so different from what I think most of us think about what a pumpkin person would look like. Yeah. Um, much more monstrous <laughs> in a lot of ways. Plus, there's the one the uh, the one that's always sort of been my favorite is that really gruesome one where there's a pumpkin and two little uh, goblins or hobgoblins cutting him in half, and he's crying. Yep. <laughs> it's um, just, a, just such a sad they're just All the other ones looking around, smiling at him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another one you have uh, here that were pointed out that I feel like I should have known, um, but the series by, um, uh, oh, shoot, her first name. Oh, Ellen Clapsaddle. Oh yeah, she's done a whole bunch. Oh, a ton, and I feel like I should have known that those were by her. Um, there's there's a whole bunch of Christmas cards, too, that she's done. But so many um, of the ones that that I've started to definitely recognize, and I know a lot of people who follow me on social media also really remember and ask me to bring up are definitely hers. So she really has a bunch that stand out. Some really weird ones in the oh, in yeah. the weird collection, like nuts. Yeah. What do nuts have to do with Halloween? Yeah, and the cabbages. Like, <laughs> yeah, cabbages. That's the other one, yeah. And that one I did find out. Um, there was a whole, like you mentioned, the mirror games and the fortune telling games. There's also a whole number of games about going out in the yard or in the garden and telling your future or telling something about who you're going to marry by picking cabbages or kale. And <laughs> yeah, so. That's definitely, that's why they show. But yeah, when I first found that, I was like, why is there Halloween underneath a picture of cabbages? (laughs) And that's that's crazy. There's the whole thing about the apples where you like peel an apple and you throw it over your shoulder Mm -hmm. and it lands in the initial of your true love. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. The other one that I'm glad to find you have here uh, is number 75. And it's the wall series. There is a, a, a handful of these <laughs> done. And I honestly, there was a short period where I was convinced that these were much more modern things that were just started to be presented as sort of old, old fashioned. Um, but they're not. <laughs> they really were printed in the What's same the- time. But but the, uh, the just the these guys, these pumpkin guys have these over the top smiling grinning faces and this one then it's on top of a basically a baby or a toddler's body holding a cat yes and yeah just very odd conjunction of different things 
in in these that series. And I do. I may not put this in there, but I know there's one that I've never. I, I'm curious if you know if it's real, but there's one. It's, it's definitely the same series, and it's a guy, one of these pumpkin guys, holding a cat over a wall, and the caption underneath it says, "Is yeah. this your pussy?" Um, and I've seen other ones where that's replaced with just Happy Halloween. So I've always wondered, is that was that as far original? as I know, that's that's the original. That's the original. Okay, yeah, that one. That one, of course, when I share it, gets shared more than anything else. <laughs> People pass <laughs> that around all over the place. Um, any others that you find particularly fun that you? I I really like all the little veggie people, and yeah. they're you know in the 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 ones that are by Tuck in the Tuck series, where you've got the watermelon, the people, the witch and the people like uh, this is number 26 in the Halloween favorites of yeah. the witch riding in a in a big watermelon with looks like I'm not if those are limes or whatever wheels mm-hmm. and that and the, just there were a lot more different vegetables I think we're stuck on pumpkins now but they were doing you know all the cabbages and the carrots and all these vegetables fun to see those things and what, what's really fun also is i've seen a, as i get to know these pictures a lot of them are getting reused now in other things you know I, like you go to target or something and you mm-hmm. see an image there and you say oh i know where you got that image mm-hmm. from yeah that's that's this image so that that's is really nice to see them reusing the images and they're always even though they're over a hundred years old, they're still very fresh and people want to see them. Yeah. Would you be comfortable with me making the, the zip collections available or not? And I'm perfectly fine. Sure. That's not. fine. I, okay. don't, I don't mind. Okay, great. I'll do that for people too. So that if they want to sort of look at a bunch all at once, that'll be great. And you've got them well organized here with, with details. Like I said, I've, I've been working on a, <laughs> you, you heard the time or I think that was a few years ago when I mentioned, you know, my dream to get that done. Then it's been years in the process and I still haven't found a system that I like best. So, um, how, ma- how many Christmas cards do you think that there are out there that there are? I don't know. Um, no. I, I truly don't know. Um, in the collection that I, I've got over 10,000 images, Oh, wow. um, and that's just of ones that I consider quote unquote weird. Like if we're just if we're just talking about images of Santa, or you know things that are, are you know typical family kinds of things, there, there's so many more. Yeah, yeah, um, it's massive. But I mean that's wow. that was kind of the thing that that started the market. And also what happened at a certain point um, was that they were just taking any images that they found and slapping Merry Christmas on the front of it. So that's that's part of the fun. Like a lot of the weirder ones are things that just have absolutely nothing to do with Christmas, but have a caption or, you know, they'll just find a place in there to, to write, you know, season's greetings or something like that. Well, that, that this yeah. happens in the Halloween ones too. Mm-hmm. I started collecting, when I, when I found out that, you know, Halloween was so expensive, I started branching out and I started looking at Thanksgiving and then Valentine and stuff. And it's interesting when you get to the Valentine stuff, it's like, oh, this is that same image over here, but they've cut out this little part here. And instead of the heart, they've got this, you know, you know, and so they just I think, you know, it's like the, the publishing company is just, you know, had the rights to those pictures or other. And I found in some places they really, uh, some publishing companies didn't have the rights to the pictures and then just went ahead and published them anyway with their little changes on them. And it was just crazy. When I first started doing the Halloween cards, I wasn't as, I didn't have as many. I hadn't looked at as many, but they got way popular much faster, even than the Christmas stuff. So I know there'll be a lot of people who will love to, browse your site and look at these collections and just have fun with it. Yeah. I'm not in any way, you know, a real expert on it. You know, I'm just, I was looking for sources of other people that would, you know, kind of direct me the way to go. And I just never found it. And so I just kept going. So I know that there's lots of mistakes and, you know, there's probably other ways to organize the stuff, but 
I, once you had 3,000 plus images, I just had to do something with them. And well, your collection is by far the most thorough I've found online of the Halloween cards. Like you said, that, that, that book that's been out, maybe, you know, they may have made a job out of it even more. But, but as far as we're, when we're talking online collections, yours is, I think, the best. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Well, thank you for your interest. And it's good to be, like, noticed for after all this work. You know, it's like, oh, I want other people to be able to enjoy them and to be able to appreciate, you know, what other people have done. Because it's a, a true art by these, these people and it's beautiful work. I agree. I can only dream of doing with Christmas what he's done with Halloween, but there are exponentially more Christmas cards from the same period of time he covers still. One can dream, right? As always, thanks so much for supporting me on Patreon. Your donations, subscriptions, I don't really know what to call them, help me keep all this going, and it lets me try fun things like this video version of the podcast. Don't forget to follow on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and I'm trying to get the Facebook group more active, so if you have a Facebook account, please consider joining up. The more, the merrier. But now I'm off to finish one more Halloween treat for you before we start the season of insanity for me called November. Lately, these two months are a kind of manic freak fest for me with so much going on. So I have tons to do, so many people reaching out. It's wonderful, it's stressful, hectic, but I love it. Mostly because it means I get in touch with other people who love looking at the odd, dark, and forgotten side of the holidays. So until next time, don't let Santa stuff you in his bulging, sweaty sack. Christmas cards there, pictures of Christmas everywhere. A Christmas stock, Christmas. Christmas.